Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to another one of our small group Bible studies. We're going to start a new series today, and uh, it's about when emotions and when problems arise in our lives. Today we're going to look at how we need to walk in grief and who we need, who we have there to help us when we run into grief. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, uh, grief is something that hits all of us at times, and right now we're going through so much. Uh, Lord, it's just, uh, it's just rampant everywhere. But help us today as we look at Your Word to realize that You're the answer to the problems that we have. Lord, uh, as I'm going to say in a little bit, we're going, we've got friends and family that's always there with us. But there's only one who truly knows our heart. And so today, help us to realize that we need to depend upon You during those periods of time. We need to depend upon You all the time. And so, Lord, we just pray that you will be with us today. Be with our country, Lord, as we go through these things that we're facing now, as we change uh, new presidents and everything. Just uh, pray that you'll be with the old president going out as he goes, Lord, and the new one that's coming in. Uh, Lord, help each and every one who's in uh, power in Congress and everything to realize what we need more than anything else is to put you back in, in our government, put you back in our lives, put you back in our schools. Because, Lord, you're truly the one who knows what's going on. You're truly the one who cares. Now take this lesson today and apply it to our hearts. In Christ's name I pray. Our lesson today is going to be from Psalms 116th chapter. So uh, it was written by David and it was written after he'd had uh, uh, his fall from grace with the Lord through uh, Bathsheba and through Uriah and what all went on with that. And he wrote this 116th Psalm and he wrote it to talk about where he really needed to go to after everything he was facing. And there's truly only one place to go to. And uh, so he, this is what he's going to talk to us about today. And even though God said David was a man after his own heart, and he said that, we need to realize it doesn't matter who we are at any time that we can fall. And uh, so when he took his eyes off the Lord and when he took his eyes off of living with him and trying to obey his uh, commands and everything, that's when David fell and, and uh, he suffered from it. He faced pain and, and suffering from it. And his life changed there for a while. And, uh, you know, we're, we're busy with all our lives and everything. And uh, the, some of the things that we face nowadays or some of the things that maybe we didn't, we didn't face years ago. And so the only one who knows what's going on, as I've already said, is the Lord. And in our world today, there's so many bad things happening to each and every one of us and around the world, and uh, the pain and sufferings just got greater and greater as, as the days go on. And our families are a good place to turn. Our families and our loved ones, our friends that we have, they're a good place to turn. But uh, for a real true help during trying times that we're facing now, the only one who knows our hearts, the only one who knows what's going on, and the only one who's got the real true answer to all the problems we have is the Lord. And so His Spirit lives within us as Christians today. And I'm glad that it does. I'm glad I have that I can depend upon. And His ways are all, and everything that He has, He's always there for us. That's one thing we need to know. He He promised that He would never, ever leave us or forsake us. That's one of the great promises in the Bible to us. And so we should really want to depend upon the Lord. So let's look at what David says about it today in in 116th chapter of Psalms. Verse 4 says, I love the Lord because He has heard my voice and my supplications because He has inclined His ear to me. Therefore, I will call upon Him as long as I live. So here's one thing that David had, he already knew this. And, and I think we all as Christians know this today. But sometimes we get involved with some things that go on in the world and family things and, and all the uh, reactions that there is going on and everything. And sometimes I think that we tend to forget it. But here's the truth, God knows. And that's what David's saying here. I've turned my voice and my supplications to Him because He's one who's inclined to... Here's the thing about it, God always listening. He always wants to listen to us. You know, He loves us far more than even our family or maybe even uh, as we love some of the members of our family, He loves us even more. Matter of fact, Christ loved us enough that He died on the cross for us. That's how much He loved us when none of us at all deserved it. But He knows what's going on in our life and here's another thing about it. God cares. Because of the love that He has for us, He truly cares. And He suffered on the cross to, to... to show how much He did care for us. And so David says, Therefore, he says, I will call on Him 
as long as I live. After David got through this little process that he'd went through and uh, had so many things going on in his life, he realized that what he needed to do was go back where he'd left the Lord. And that's what we all can do. Wherever it is that we walk off from Him and leave Him and decide to do something else in this world or, or get involved with something else in this world, we can always come back to Him because He's always there right where we left Him. And so then David says, The pains of death have surrounded me, and the pangs of Sheol have laid hold on me. I have found trouble and sorrow. So this is what David run into. He had uh, to go back and look at what had happened to him in his life he had had an affair with a, with a woman named Bathsheba. And uh, she became with child. And after that, uh, he found out that he couldn't get her husband. He called his husband in who was at war, called her, him in from the field and tried to get him to go in and be with his wife. And that didn't work. So because David couldn't figure out anything else to do in the frame of mind that he was in, he had Uriah put in front of the battle and had him killed. And God says that because He done that, when, when the baby was born, the baby died. God took, his, God took the baby's life. And then on top of that, uh, one of David's stepsons uh, raped one of his daughters. He had two or three wives and had different children from them. And one of them raped one of his uh, daughters. And when the brother of the daughter saw what had happened and found out what was happened, he went and killed the, the boy that had done that. And so we see in David's life and everything that he was going through, uh, not counting just what had happened with him and Bathsheba and Uriah, David faced a lot of things. He really did face a lot of things in his life. But here's the thing about David. After that baby died and he realized what was going on and everything that else had happened, he said, you know what? I can't do anything about what I've, what I've done other than ask forgiveness. But I can, I can, from here on, I can depend upon the Lord. And so that's what he says here in verse 4. He says, Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I implore you to deliver my soul. Deliver who I am inside. Every one of us are body, soul, and spirit. And the soul is what's the inner part of us. That's who we really are. You can look at this body and say, Well, there, there's, there's who Bobby is. I, I can see his body. And we all have a spirit that God gave us. But here's the thing about it. The real person that's on the inside, really who we are, what makes us tick and everything is our soul. And he, he asked to hear, Lord, I implore you to deliver my soul. Then he says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, God is, our, God is extremely merciful. I love that phrase because that covers two of the major things that God done for us. He gave us grace. When He died on the cross, He gave us grace because He did something for us that we couldn't do. He made it possible for us one day to spend eternity with Him. And so it says here, He was gracious. That's, that's where that word grace comes from. The Lord was gracious, just as He was to David. And He says, then, God, you are also merciful. And what mercy means is that it means that God withheld from us what we truly deserve. Stop and think about in our own lives today some of the things that we can go back and look and see what we've done. What do we truly deserve for them? And yet God was merciful to us and withheld what we truly deserve. So it says that the Lord preserves the simple. And I don't think he's talking about just simple minded or anything, but the plain and the easy. It doesn't matter who it is. God is ready and willing to be there for everybody. Not just King David, but you and I. Anybody that, that are, is a child of God, God's always there. I kind of like to look at it from as God sitting up in heaven. Of course, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. But I like to look at it as God sitting up in heaven. And he's walking, down, walking around in heaven. He's got a big banister up there and He's leaning over that banister. And He's looking down on you and I down here on the earth. And He's watching every one of us. Now, I don't understand that. Because I can't hardly concentrate on more than one thing at one time. But God is watching every one of us. He knows everything that's going on every single day. And that's what it says here. It says, The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and He saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul. God's talk, uh, David's talking about his own soul now. He was in deep trouble there for a while. Had a lot of anxiety, a lot of grief was going on because of everything that was happening to him. But now, because he's turned back to God and God has forgiven him, he says, I want to return back, uh, back to your rest that you give us, each and every one of us. So he says, I want to lay it in your hands. You see, we may have a lot of good friends. 
and we may have a good family, but when it comes to some things, there's, there's only some things, that, only one thing that God can do. God can do a lot of things that some of our family can't. And so that's what he's saying here. I want to rest my soul in you. I want to lay it back in your hands because you're the one who can take care of it. Verse 8 says, For you have delivered my soul from death. And this word death, I think right here, is not talking about the physical death, although we're going to look at that in just a minute about physical death. But I think he's talking about the true death. And, and the mean, true meaning of the word death means eternal separation from God. One day we're going to be, we're going to either be eternally living with Him, or we're going to be eternally separated from Him. And in the Scripture it says that's what the true meaning of word, word, the word death is, that we're going to be eternally separated. So He says, "You have delivered my soul from that eternal separation." He says, "My and my eyes from their tears, and my feet from my falling. I will walk before the Lord in His hand in the land of the living." So he's telling us now here, and one thing that we all should realize, the Lord is his strength now. He, he depended on his own self and he depended upon a lot of people around him, but now David realizes in the man that's a, that has a heart for God, he realizes that where his true strength really lies, and that's in the Lord. So he says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore I spoke, and I, am, I have been greatly afflicted. And I said in my haste, all men are of liars. We can be as good as we want to be. But one day we'll come to realization the only person who can truly help us. Uh, the government says they can do it. We're bringing in a new government now. And, and, and the presidents, uh, the for, for, uh, future presidents on there talking about how good America's going to be. The one that's going out was talking about how good it was going to be that he was in. And the thing about it is they're trying to do it from a man's standpoint. And it doesn't work because, you see, we were created to have a relationship with God. And so when we depend upon man to fulfill what God wants to fulfill, it's going to fall short. So he says, all men are liars. Then he says, what shall I render to the Lord? What shall I give the Lord? Because of what He's done for me, what shall I give to Him? It says, for all of His benefits toward me. Two of the great benefits He gives us is, first of all, the salvation. Christ died on the cross for us. So he, that's a great benefit that He gave us was eternal salvation. Then the second thing I think He gives us is peace. He can give us peace when no one else can. When everything's falling around beside us, and we see it in the Scripture many times, like Paul and Silas, especially one time, and I've talked about this before. They were in prison. They'd been beaten and hung up and, and in chains. And they were sitting there because of the peace that God gave them, and they were sitting in there singing, praising God for what was going on. So he says, what can I render to him? You know what God wants out of our life? He wants two very important things. He wants our obedience and our devotion. That's the two main things after giving him our, salva giving him our life for salvation. That's the two main things that we can give him. Our devotion to who he is and what he's done for us. And then our obedience towards obeying what he wants to do, wants to do through us. Verse 13 says, I will take up the cup of salvation, which we've already talked about, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. When you get to the point where there's nowhere else to turn in your grief and everything you're facing, you can always call upon the Lord. And he says, I will pay my vows to the Lord and now in the presence of all His people. So this is what David says, I will live for the Lord. That's the way I'll pay my vow back to Him. I will live for Him. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Now I think we're talking about here the physical death. Because you see, eternal salvation is, is separated from God is our eternal death. But this one here, when we die a physical death here on the face of the earth, guess what? As Christians, we go in the presence of the Lord immediately. That's a great promise. And that's what David said here. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. In other words, that's when they get to go come up and be in the presence of God. That's when God gets to bring us home. What a great time that is for a lot of us, will be for a lot of us. He says, O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. David vowed that he would be a great servant to the Lord after what he'd done for him. Brought him through the things that he had after he had sinned and caused so many problems. But because the Lord was merciful, because the Lord was giving grace, he says, I will serve you now as one of your great servants. 
Then he tells David, then he tells the Lord, says, You have loosed my bonds. In other words, he's released him from the fear. He's released him from the problems that he had. You know, there's no greater feeling than when you get real relief. Maybe you've had a bad headache, and all of a sudden that headache goes away. Or maybe you've had a pain somewhere in your, like in your foot or something, and all of a sudden that pain goes away. What a great relief that is. Well, that's what David's talking about here. Not from physical pain, but he's talking about from the mental pain that we face when we face grief and problems in our life. A lot of them because of, that we've caused. But he says, whenever you have loosed my bonds, I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving because you have released me. You have released me from my fear. You've released me from our pain. And he says, and then I will also call upon the name of the Lord. That's where we need to be. We need to be ready to call upon the name of the Lord because He's the one who can truly answer the problems that we have. He's the one that can truly wrap His arm around us and love us. Our family and friends, like I said at first, may do it. And, there's, and that's, that's a great asset. But there's nobody can love us like God loves us. So He says in verse 18, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all His people. In other words, he, David will come to this point in his life where he says he's ready to let everybody know, even though God already said he was a man after his own heart, to let the whole world know that, the, that there's only one true and living God that they need to be serving. And that's what David says he's doing. So he says, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all His people. I will let them know. And in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, all of Jerusalem, and at this time, it was a powerful country. He wanted all of Jerusalem to know where, where his relief was, where his uh, love was, where his constant uh, love from the Lord was, where his, when he was in grief and when he was in sorrow and everything, where all of his good feelings was going to come from, where his relief was going from. God was going to wrap his arms of love around him and love him. And then he says, the very last thing David says in this is, Praise the Lord. We need to really praise the Lord for how good He is to us. Now sometimes it, it, when we go through the things in this life, it's tough to do that. But when we get right with Him and get back and let Him just put His arms around us and love on us, that's when we need to praise Him because He's the one worthy of it. He's the one who can love us like nobody else can. And He's the one who can give, for, uh, help our grief pass away when we actually let Him wrap our, His arms of love around us. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank You because You love us so much. Before the foundations of the world were even laid, Lord, You knew that we were going to sin, and yet You knew You were still going to send Your Son down to die on the cross. Lord, there's no greater love that we can even think of than that. And You're up there all the time watching us. You're with us all the time. Your Spirit lives inside of ones of us who are Christians. So You're here all the time. Lord, You know what's going on in every one of us. I don't understand that. But here's what I do understand and do know. Lord, you're always there for us. The Scripture says you will never leave us and forsake us. What a great promise that is. The Lord God Almighty who spoke the whole world into existence cares about me. And He cares about you. Lord, may our vows, like David said, may they be unto you. That we will put you first in our life and give you the glory for everything going on. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, folks. And y'all have a great day.